Hey there champions, welcome to the game of the day. Today we have round 9 of World Under 16 Chess Championship and I'm impressed by this game. That's the reason I wanted to share it with you. We are seeing the game of Lamazes White against Harshad and Lamazes Simon who is currently 2384, let's say 120 points below 25, the GM level. I'm pretty sure this kid will make it in the near future. Why you will see in this game and usually we are used to see if there is a young player they are going for attack, tactic, something crazy. In this game you are not going to see any single tactic. However, the positional masterpiece of white was just amazing. I am pretty sure if Capablanca was watching this game he would be proud. Let's get started. D4, knight f6, c4, e6, g3. We are not going to focus a lot on the openings, just seeing how it happens. D5. Knight f3, bishop b4 check, bishop d2, bishop e7, bishop g2 castle. Super popular theories nowadays, the Catalan systems. Castle, c6, bishop f4, white's improving position of the piece. Knight bd7, knight bd2. Usually both players are trying to develop the pieces and knight h5 is the move which was played in the game. Black's trying to gain bishop pair advantage. However, white is also feeling comfortable with this. E3 is very interesting move played in the game. Bishop on f3 is not being trapped, no need to worry about this. Some sort of g5 doesn't work because knight takes g5 and the knight on h5 is hanging as well. So for this reason, after e3, black continues knight takes on f4, e takes f4. White is giving up a bishop pair advantage, however, getting a good space, very strong king's position, some potential to push against the opponent king because of space advantage. Also, black is very passive, so this is interesting positions happening quite often nowadays. Pawn a5, rook c1, pawn b6. Whenever b6 is played, it's a good moment to take it on d5 because now black needs to take with the c-pawn and the c-file gets open. White is also activating the other piece, rook goes to e1. It's a half open file, right now it's difficult to say what can be a value of this rook here, but as you will see in the future it makes a lot of sense. Overall it's a good technique to bring your pieces into the game. Black continued bishop a6. Let me explain a quick detail. This is a good bishop of black, is playing on the diagonal, is doing a good work. Bishop on e7 is not a bad piece, however there are too many white pawns blocking this bishop. And because of this, white will feel happy to exchange pair of the bishops. It's a good strategy against the monster guys and about this we are talking a lot in the bishop pair course. So if you have a lack of knowledge in this topic, I recommend you to check it out. White goes bishop f1. Now, if they exchange, okay, let's say take, white can capture with the knight, with the king even, some less squares might be weakened on the queen side. So after bishop f1, black immediately went for b5, and white improved position of the piece. Bishop goes to d3. This is already a very nice setup for a white here. There are some options available for black, developing, white is slightly better, but they played queen b6. This is a mistake, a structural mistake, which allows white to make a strong move. What will we play here for white? For a second, think about it. Did you notice that the bishop on e7 is not defended? Suddenly white can go pawn f5 and it's a great choice, cause now black is not able of capturing and after something like bishop f6 as it happened. Pawn takes, pawn takes, e6 became a weakness, fixed weak pawn on the e file which is already a great outcome. Now white defends the pawn on d4 with knight b3, secondly with this move, we are also fighting for the weak square on c5. Positionally white is doing a very good job. Black plays king to h8, just in case taking king out of the fire from this diagonal. And queen e2, it's a multifunctional square, queen is attacking on e6, on the other hand it's pressuring on this diagonal, so it's gonna be way more difficult for black to play some before ideas. They continued, rook a to e8, and it's already time to go ahead. White here played knight to c5. White's trying to exchange the knight on d7, which is first of all defender of the e5 square. Secondly, after knight takes, white captures with the pawn. First good outcome, pawn on c5 is a passed pawn. You may say, okay, after queen c6, black's also having a passed pawn on the d file. First of all, c5 is more advanced. 
D pawn is gonna be very difficult for advancements because uh, D4 is blocked by this bishop. This C5 is protected by the rook now. We can create a stronger pawn chain. Secondly, it's closer to our position. Having a pass pawn away from the king from opponent's pieces is usually a good asset. So, now understanding that dark squares are the biggest weakness of opponent, white goes for the next movement, knight to e5. Queen is under attack, if it goes back, b5 can be lost, so black played here, bishop takes, queen takes. And here we're getting a total domination of white bishop against the opponent's one. Let me quickly mention, some idea like before is not possible, because white's capable of capturing, queen takes and pawn c6. This pawn will go even to c7, white will double up the rooks and have a super strong pawn on the 7th rank. So it's gonna be difficult for black in that case. After queen e5 they played rook to f6, just trying to strengthen position. Now it's going to be a slow but at the same time very instructive game. White now plays f4. Fixing just in case the pawn structure of opponent e6 is a long time weakness. Black continued, bishop to c8, and queen d4, in conditions when on e5, queen was in front of the rooks, now it's defending the pawn and giving the freedom to this guy. Also it's a great central square, just in case blocking the d-pawn, since this king can be a very little vulnerable in some d4, bishop b7 ideas. Turns out, black has just to go for a passive defense, bishop d7. At this moment, many kids would have played some, I don't know, h4, h5, g4, trying to attack, going all in, but not Simone. He played pawn a3, king g8, pawn b4, white strengthening the position on the queen side. Now c5 is a protected passed pawn. Secondly, our bishop is on the light square, so we would like to locate pawns on the dark ones, so opponent's bishop can never attack them. On the other hand, we are happy to fix pawns of opponent on the light squares. They are eternal targets for our bishop. So here black went rig 8 logically thinking to open up the file. And white continued now, rook to b1. Let me quickly mention that going now b takes a5 would be a disaster, because after rook takes, white's breaking the pawn structure and a3 is becoming a weakness. So after rook a8, white played rook to b1. At the moment I think black was supposed to play pawn takes before, pawn takes, even though their position is very tough, at least they try to fight for the open file, maybe rook f8, rook f4, the other rook to a8, hoping to give a fight. After rook b1, they played pawn a4, and this is completely closing the queen side. So it turns out that white is just fixing the weaknesses, on the other hand, they can fully focus on the king side of opponent. White played rook e5, a good move, putting rook on a more active square, controlling the fifth rank as well. Black continued g6, and pawn h4, it's logical to have some options of pawn h5 in the future. Black continued rook a to f8, and here again, many young players, not only young ones, would have played h5, which is a good move, it's also leading to a winning advantage. But I like the positional style, white goes rook c1, just in case putting the rook on a better square in front of the queen, in some occasions supporting the pawn. So black here continued bishop to e8, I'm sorry, black here continues bishop to e8, and now we are starting to see the reason why we are watching this game. Again, there are thousands of winning ideas. White has a total domination, but white is making this crazy plan. King goes to f2. Initially, when I was watching the game, I thought maybe white wants to take the king to b2 somewhere safer and attack here on the king side. Okay, maybe black player thought the same and played pawn h5. Okay, king e3 now happened. I was like, hmm. What's the idea? What are they willing to do? Again, I thought about maybe now rook g1, pawn g4. However, after king f7, white went for rook g5. After king e7, white wait for queen e5. Black king also started a little running. They thought that if they are attacked on the king side, king should go to the other side of the board. But suddenly here, after bishop f7 move, white played king d4, a mind-blowing move, but it's so strong. White is just creating a monster blocker in the center, and whenever king is so powerful, it's also a good reason to think about different endgames. Now, 
All the position is blocked, no ideas for a black like d4. Rook on f6 is stuck to this g6 defend. Bishop on f7 is also very passive. Black played rook to h8, just hanging around, maybe thinking if white goes g4, after exchanging, the h4 will be hanging. And after rook h8, white is playing the next move. White plays queen d6 check. In such a position, white exchanges the queens, going for the winning endgame. Trust me, this is very rare to see in a game of a young player who has such a big understanding in chess and a great technique. So queen takes, pawn takes, king takes d6 and bishop captures on b5. What's the picture right now? We have a defended passed pawn on the queen side. Opponent's pawn is completely blocked. Black has fixed weaknesses on e6, g6, a4, but also pawns on h5 and d5 were potentially weak. This bishop, compared to opponent's one, is a monster. So for all of these reasons combined, black's position is just hopeless. Here black continued rook to b8. Now again, bishop a4 leads to a good position, but there is rook a8, rook a3 could be dangerous. White player is not in a rush. Rook c5 is played, slowly just nullifying all of the potential threats of opponent. Black continues rook f5 and ignoring this rook, white captures the pawn. Now let me mention that if black goes rook a8, there is rook a5 idea. After it takes and pawn takes, white getting the outside pass pawn which is very powerful. If black king is distracted on this side, white will be able to win the other pawns here. So for this reason, after bishop takes a4, black played rook g5. Pawn takes rook a8 again, but after rook a5, they are not capturing, so they went back for rook c8. Now white has already two connected pass pawns, it's a decisive advantage. And white is still playing better. Instead of pushing the pawns, they notice that opponent king, bishop pair is in tough conditions. Dark squares are so weak. How to use this? How to make value out of dark squares? Pause the video for a second and think about it. Well, here white just played rook e6 check, king e7, rook a7 check, forcing this king to be stuck to bishop's defense, so king f8, and just king e5, king goes to f6, and it will be very dangerous attack on the king. Black here went king g7, trying to stop the threats. And the last move, which is winning the game, is bishop to d7. Now the rook is under attack and bishop e6 is hanging. Here black played rook c3 and looks like it's a good moment to relax and capture bishop e6. I have a question. Is it the right move? Not at all. It's a big blunder. Big blunder. Be careful. Be aware of your opponent's threats. It can be very helpful for you guys if you are struggling against the blunders to watch the blunderproof course of Gemma Vedic where he explains everything about this important topic. In the winning positions we should be careful. Bishop e6 visually looks right, but rook e3 check, king e6, rook d6, and now white is having only 3 pawns for this piece. Position is just drawish. White will try to push, but black will take the weaknesses and again. We should be super careful when the position is winning. Double check our moves. After rook c3, white just went for bishop e8. And now the check is not winning the bishop because of the pawn on e6. So it happened. Rook e3 check, king d6 and black's losing the bishop. So in a few moves after d4, rook f7 check, king g8 and rook d7, black player resigned. We had a fantastic game played by a young player. So once again, I'm repeating the name, Lamaze Simon, and I'm pretty sure we're sooner going to see this guy in the list of grandmasters. Hope you enjoyed this one, these dark squares, nice strategies, and you might borrow some ideas for your future games. Jem Gabuzian was here with you. Thank you, and I'm going to see you in our next videos. Stay well.